Hello everybody, this is Mike Gorshan and today I'm with Manuel Alvarez of Latina Services. And Manuel, could you introduce yourself? My name is Manuel Alvarez and I'm the president of Latina Servicios, uh, which is a company that provides tax preparation and other services for the Hispanic community in the Bay Area. I am originally from Mexico, so I did my undergrad in Mexico. I have a degree in industrial engineering. I got my MBA at Stanford University here in, in the U.S., and I did some studies at the Sorbonne, Paris. The past 15 years, I spent most of my career working with you know large companies such as Pepsi, Levi's, and Gap. And about three years ago, I started uh, Latino Servicios because I saw a significant need within the Latino community in the Bay Area for tax preparation and other financial services. From what you believe the United States view is, what is a good citizen? A good citizen is someone that is contributing to the economy of the U.S., that is paying their, their taxes, that understands what their responsibilities are, and is making sure that they're also respecting the laws the way that they're, they're written. If they understood their rights and their taxes were sent in appropriately, can you give a little bit of feeling of the numbers of people and the impact that might have um, on the United States? There's roughly about 12 million undocumented workers in, in the U.S., of which roughly 75% of them are Latinos. There's That may be maybe 8 to 9 million you know, undocumented people. And let's say that of those, maybe there's 5 million, 5 to 6 million that are actually head of households that are workers. Even being conservative, let's say that 20% of those people that have not been paying their taxes, you know, start contributing, you know, and paying taxes. We're talking that it's, you know, one to two million additional people that would pay taxes. And if on average they pay a thousand to two thousand dollars, you know, per person, start getting into some pretty big numbers right away. We're talking, you know, several billion dollars. The impact of those undocumented workers of becoming more integrated into the U.S. economy and, and paying their taxes is it can be pretty big right away. Well, the United States, if if the United States can realize a billion dollars, what do they have to spend to to get that? And what are they spending it on? Latinos tend to watch TV, Spanish TV, Univision specifically. It's a, a big broadcaster in Spanish. Uh, so if we would u look at using TV, I think that we could invest maybe fifty, sixty million dollars. And, and when I say we, you know the whether it's nonprofits or the broadcaster or certain, you know, the government or whoever. But I think if we, we invest, you know, $50, $60 million in, in education around, you know, taxes and their rights and obligations and everything, I think, you know, the ROI would be huge for the U.S. Because as we said, you know, even if we get 20% more people of those undocumented workers that are not currently doing their taxes to pay their taxes, we're talking at least a billion plus. There are more engineers being graduated in Mexico than there are in the United States. There's a young work workforce that is required by the United States where we just don't have that youth. We're not bringing the engineers over. We're bringing Indian and Chinese engineers, if anything. The oil is going down. The oil revenue is going down. Tourism in Maquiador is sort of steady. And yet we're talking about our second largest trading partner, uh, the only thing I could figure out is there's this uncontrolled assimilation that the United States is afraid of or something like that. There's been a lot of debate been a lot of debate around the Hispanics in the U.S. creating a subculture and, and not, not assimilating. And that may be true for the first generation, but when you look at second generation Hispanics, they all speak English. And, and sure, they, at, at home they may speak Spanish and they may be watching the telenovelas in, in, in Spanish. But everyone of the second generation, they all speak English. You know, I'm, I'm first generation Mexican myself. I'm a U.S. citizen now, but I have my kids here. And the battle is for the kids to speak Spanish. And, and that, that's, that's happening everywhere. So I don't really see that, you know, that Hispanics is being a culture that is trying, not trying to assimilate it to the U.S. I actually think that maybe the first generation is not assimilating as much, but Neither were the first generation Germans or Irish or others that arrived you know, 100, 200 years ago. If the United States needs engineers, the way I'm saying it, they're going to go to India, and that's fine. And maybe there's an English-speaking thing there, maybe not. And they go to China, 
you know, or Taiwan, and and but and then Mexico's way down there, and yet, and somebody brought this out: the Mexican engineering or that that discovery talent should be higher up on the food, you know, higher up. You know, they should have higher demand in the United States because they're coming here. They want to stay here. The Indians, the Chinese, they want to go back home, and boof, all that intelligence goes with it. And why isn't that happening? I think you raise a very interesting point, and I think a lot of it has to do with, with incentives. Uh, you know, if you look at, you know, a lot of the people that have migrated from Mexico to the U.S., some of them may have good preparation and, you know, degrees and everything, but uh, they may be working here uh, in, you know, in lower, lower paying jobs because that's the only thing they can get. If, if they're undocumented here in the U.S., even though they may have an engineering degree, they're not going to get an engineering job. So part of, you know, I think that this new immigration reform that, that, that's, that's being talked about recently in the, and what's going to be more of a points and skill system uh, than a family-based system, I think that that could potentially enable uh, the U.S. to take advantage of engineers coming from the neighbor next door than from other countries. Out of all your clients, uh, how many do manual labor and out of that, how many are educated to do, um, you know, the skilled labor that they've been trained in? I would say that 60 to 70 percent of my client base uh, is does you know more manual type labor. So definitely, it's 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 a vast majority. I would I would estimate that a good 30 percent, 20 to 30 percent are have a a university degree at least, and and they may be you know, not, not taking advantage of that university degree and the work that they're doing here in the U.S. If you looked at India or Taiwan or even China, there's a lot of effort that goes on between the governments to negotiate, to create pipelines, you know, to create all sorts of alliances that give some kind of level of comfort. Where is the Mexican government and all that? And, and where, what more or less that can they do? Unfortunately, I don't think that the Mexican government has really had a concerted effort in trying to leverage, you know, the skill base that exists or try to you know, create better paths. Uh, I think that for the Mexican government, it's been, you know, pretty comfortable. Uh, it's been a very comfortable position that even though the Mexican economy is not doing that well, there's been a, a, a large exodus of people moving to the U.S. Once again, even though the economy is not doing that well, because of the large amount of wealth coming from the U.S., that actually has put a, the Mexican government in a, in a fairly comfortable position that, that I think we need to you know, really push the Mexican government to do more in that regard. What makes the Mexican government do something? What's the pressure point? What, you know, what do they react to? When President Fox came into power, there was a lot of talk about the U.S. and Mexico you know, being closer. And initially, you know, everyone thought that, that President Bush was going to try to do more things with Mexico. Then 9-11 happened, so, and then we got into, into Iraq and, and other things happened. So that totally distracted President Bush from, from concentrating on Mexico. So I think that if right now with, you know, the, the potential immigration reform and, and other things, you know, they're being point more, more attention towards Mexico, I think that the U.S. government can really try to leverage that that stronger focus on on the migration and uh, and Mexico and everything to really put some pressure on the U.S. on the Mexican government to start taking actions on on some of these planning actions that that could you know have a longer term effect rather than just you know worrying about today and tomorrow, but, but thinking more about the tomorrow. Thank you, Manuel. Please check out www.marsound.com for more interviews, and please add comments, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.